You guys, today is the day. Today we finally got an update on the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games. The Pokemon Company dropped a new trailer this morning, June 1st at 6 a.m. Let's talk about it. In case you're new here, my name's Diana and I make all kinds of nerdy content that has to do with anime, especially Pokemon and Halo and anything else that I think is fun to talk about. So if you're into any of those things, give this video a thumbs up to push it into the YouTube algorithm for all the other Pokemon fans so we can all fangirl over this trailer and feel free to subscribe so you can hear about more of the things that I find interesting. All my socials are listed down below as well, but let's hop into the breakdown of the new trailer. So I wanted to start off by saying I don't think I didn't like anything about the trailer. I thought that the game looked great and it looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. So let's hop into the game mechanics real quick. I love that they are keeping the open world concept that they started to kind of pepper in in Sword and Shield and then really dove into in the Legends Arceus game. I'm super excited that they decided to keep that concept for a mainline Pokemon game since we've actually never seen an open world game in like the mainline games. You've always had to go in a specific order and that's another thing that they added into this game is that you don't have to go based on a storyline when you play this game. So you don't have to go to like specific gyms in a specific order in order to progress. You're basically able to go wherever you want want at any time and I think that this makes it so much better for replayability like you're able to play the game in so many different ways go to different gym leaders or towns or rivals at different levels and with different teams and it's all a new experience every time so I think that this is amazing and a great step forward. I'm so glad that they went in this direction. I think it's going to do wonders for the series. From what it seems like, it looks like they're kind of sticking to the normal way of catching Pokemon where you kind of had to run into them in order to initiate a battle. Unlike Legends Arceus where you could simply throw the Pokeball from afar and initiate battle that way. So I think we're kind of going back to the old way of things where you had to run into the Pokemon in order to initiate a battle. So I guess we'll see if there's anything like Arceus where there's like tall grass that they're hiding in or if it's just more like Sword and Shield where they're just in the overworld like it was in the wild area where they just be kind of roaming around. The other cool thing is that this game is going to be a co-op game so you're going to be able to play this game with friends. It's not quite clear whether you can do that for the entire game or just in certain parts of it but I think that that's super cool. Kind of tapped into that in the Let's Go series so I'm glad that they're bringing it back and that you can play with four people it seems like in this game which I think is also going to improve the replayability of the game since you are able to have a different experience with different friends. It also looks like they are changing the Pokemon centers and Pokemarts a little bit. It looks like there's these little like towers that are scattered throughout the open world that are supposed to have like a beam of light shooting out from them so you can see them from far away. That way you can find them when you're roaming around <laughs> with all the Pokemon and you can heal and buy your items, things like that. It looks like there is some kind of commercial playing um, around the perimeter on the screens of these little Pokemarts. I don't know if that's supposed to be something that's supposed to tell you what kind of Pokemon are in the area since it looks like it rotates between different Pokemon. So I don't know if that's what they're trying to do with that or if it's literally just a feature that they wanted to add in there for funsies. We are getting a clear theme in this trailer as well. This is obviously going to be a past versus future themed game. We get our first glimpse of that with the game exclusive professors. So depending on the version of the game that you get, you either get Sada or Turo. Sada is the professor that you get if you have the Scarlet game and Turo is the professor that you get if you get the Violet games. So we can clearly see based based off of the professor's outfits, which game is set in the past and which game is set in the future. Obviously Scarlet is set in the past since Sada is literally dressed like an actual cave woman from the hair down to the whole outfit. Whereas Turo looks like he went shopping at the latest Balenciaga sale and is wearing like a head to toe futuristic outfit. And each one of the professors has their own thing that they're researching and their own storyline. So depending on the game, you're going to have two different storylines. You also get a new rival, which I think her design is so cute. Like she's actually really pretty. Hello. Her name is Nimona and it looks like she's going to be some kind of classmate of yours since depending on which game you buy, her outfit is going to coordinate with yours. Of course, we can't forget about the three new Pokemon that were introduced, one of which is currently breaking the internet, which is Lechonk, which is the cutest little black hog Pokemon. He is going to be 
be a normal type Pokemon and he's supposed to have the ability Glutton and Aurora Veil. His description is so funny. It says that at first glance he looks fat but he's mostly muscle because he's literally always walking around looking for food. So he's just a hungry boy. We were also introduced to Small Liv. Also, I love these names. Every single one of these names is literally like a meme. So Small Liv, which is literally a little olive. Small Liv is literally described as an olive Pokemon and it is a grass type. And his ability is early bird. He's also said to have a little storage container on top of his head so that he doesn't have to eat for days because he basically eats by like photosynthesis. And apparently the oil that comes out of his head is supposed to be super bitter and astringent so it can actually cause you to flinch when you attack it. And of course we have Palmy, which is our Pikachu variant for the region. Palmy is a little electric mouse Pokemon that creates electricity by rubbing its cheeks together and then it also stores it in its paws and also in its fur, which makes sense since its ability is static and natural cure. All three of these little guys are supposed to be used by your rival, so you will be battling them, so I guess we'll find out what they evolve into if they evolve. And then, of course, we ended off the trailer by being introduced to the box art legendaries, which look so cool. I think they're supposed to be based off of motorcycles. So the legendaries' names are Koridon and Miraidon, and supposedly Miraidon is Japanese for future. So eh, it just kind of <laughs> it just kind of confirms the fact that these two games are set in the past and the future. And since they clearly look like they're based off of these same Pokemon, they're both like these big salamander dragon looking Pokemon. Maybe we're gonna get some kind of like Mew and Mewtwo moment where maybe the one in the future was man-made and the one in the past is some like elusive legendary that's been around for forever but nobody's seen it but there was also speculation about the types for the legendaries and this is thanks to good old riddler Koo leaking the typing on twitter supposedly we were supposed to get a dragon fighting type and a dragon electric type and based off of the design for both of the legendaries i think he's pretty spot on so i feel like this is almost all but confirmed at this point just based off of the way that they look but i think they look really cool and i really like this past and future concept Concept. So after we're introduced to the legendaries, there's this little after credit almost. That's just like a Pokeball kind of like gliding over a silvery metallic background. Nobody knows what it means, but there's been a ton of speculation. So I want to end off this video talking about what they might be hinting at. So I've heard a couple of things. Some people think that we're maybe getting a third legendary and this is kind of hinting at that. Some people think this is maybe the gimmick for this game since we didn't see the gimmick. And by gimmick, I mean something like Mega Evolution or Dynamax and Sword and Shield. They didn't really hint at anything for this game, so people are maybe speculating that it might be something to do with that. Or the one that I think is a little far-fetched but would make me very happy is that maybe this is supposed to be the Evolution that everyone has been wanting and everyone thought that they were gonna get today since the Pokemon company has been dropping Eevee content left and right. But let me know what you guys think the after credit scene is hinting at. I wanna hear your theories. What do you think of the game so far? I'm actually super stoked. I think it looks so cool. This trailer got me super excited. I know it wasn't a ton of information, but I think we're gonna get more regular updates now that they've dropped this trailer. So let me know what you guys think down below and I will see you guys in the next video.